Okay, let's have another go. Another GM. Okay. Well, uh, let's try and play uh, super solid, I think. Try and minimize embarrassment. Um, although that sometimes doesn't help. H4, A4, Knight A3. I'll try and get onto this B5 square. Actually, this triangle isn't that good if his bishop's not being chasoed. Bishop's just the target here, actually, for a moment. Unless Knight B5 is going to be a nuisance. Knight B5 to D6, Knight C4, D5, Knight B5, Rook C8. D5, what about D takes? Okay. We're here for a sec. That's bishop A6. That could be very annoying. Bishop A6. What do I want to do that for? Queen B3 is almost winning. D5, E2 drops. Oh there. Actually, knight D4 here? Might be E5. Knight c6, knight d4, bishop b7. I think knight d4 might be playable. Uh, I'm going to give it a shot because it's bishop on diagonal. Hoping he blunders. d5, take on c6, then knight e5, maybe. Is that the best? Probably. Give something to do with this knight. Little tiny, tiny advantage. Try and fracture the pawns, maybe queen a4 would be good. Knight c6. Or a6. a6 for knight c6, that would be juicy. Actually, I like the position here with this knight on e5. Temporary peace quality to try and exploit against the GM. So queen a4, a6, that, that would help try and exploit the knight. Forcing moves, docking computer, any forcing moves, not really. Apart from a6, and knight c6. There's queen a4 is also on the cards, and I'm getting a rook here for something like. E4, things like knight h5, what do I do against knight h5? Bishop e3 might might be a shot. Okay, knight f7 is not working. Uh, I'll, I'll give a6 a shot here. For knight c6. If it takes, then a b. So knight c6, is that at all useful? Probably not. <laughs> Um, it might start to begin to be useful soon. He's a bit cramped. Maybe something like queen c6, knight f7, try and win d6. Queen c6 hitting a8, so that is a forcing move. If bishop b5, bishop b5, I've got a good position here. Surely. Let's go on to these dark squares. So bishop d6. Ah, that forces rook e8. It looks unpleasant uh, to force that. But uh, ultimately, hang on, he's got his god. e5 is going to swallow my bishop whole. Oh, what am I doing? He's got rook c4 as well. Let's just get back out of here. He's even got rook c4, rook a4. Let's just hold on a sec. Right, that protects against winning the exchange. Um, mind you, he's pushing me back. F6, his queen could try and get to F2. F6, bishop, e4, e5. I'm getting pushed back, but this knight's on a dangerous spot. So maybe bishop, d4, bishop, e4 is a threat for queen, c4. Hmm. He's a minute behind. Okay, he's gonna go for this e5, he's gonna run into d5 pressure. He's taken away f6 for his queen. So I wanna play just bishop e3, I think. And uh Actually bishop e4 is the immediate forcing move threat again. Another forcing move, bishop e6 doesn't do anything unless a7 is gonna do something. But yeah, I'm just usefully checking for forcing moves. Any liabilities this diagonal. E5, bishop e4. That'd be good, surely. So say knight moves, okay. We've got c4 here, just trying to undermine, it just takes. Bishop b6 here, I don't think it's that useful. Bishop e4. 
um, could leave him sort of weak. Yes, on the default. And this one looks like a nice default. Can I just double up rooks if I play rook d2? It looks uncomfortable. This pawn's blocking out his attack on my knight squares for a moment. e6 looks uncomfortable. Bishop f4 to d6 is a beautiful threat. Oh, he's extinguishing it. Bishop b6, okay. Do I go with rook d5? Get a strange sack. Is there any need? Why, why is there any need? Just queen b5 here. So I've got the pressure. Okay, it's kicking me back. What about rook d7? Forcing a rook d7 just to get this a7. That would make sense for a7. If I get rook d7, then he can't challenge the default just yet. So rook d7 looks good. Ouch. Okay. Um. Keep keep the pressure on tactically on that rook. Oh dear. Okay. Um. There's no bishop c5 or anything. He's getting me away from the default. How annoying is that? Um. Right, there's no bishop c5. What if I just get. Oh no, that'll lose a rook. That wouldn't be the most helpful. Let's attack this pawn for a sec. And then maybe queen b4 is supported by the rook. So I'm on e4. He protects e4, then queen b4. Got a good time advantage. That opposite color bishop and pawn ending. Is it interesting? I don't know, actually. Yeah. Probably not. a7's on! And he he takes. It's, it's no good, is it? It's better just to keep the pressure on a7 rather than take it. Rook a5, bishop. Can I march the king in? f3, would that be useful? Let's try and get this b5. Get the king in. What about bishop c5? Alright, <clears throat> get the rook back. His king's gonna come for me, isn't it? I've got rook d6 coming! No! He's still a bit tied down. What about f4? Go for the g file next. No! Can I, I can't sack a pawn here. Rook e1 check. Can I infiltrate? Get the rook behind. Without getting mated, hopefully. Uh oh. It's almost got a winning pawn. Can I, I thought to take on a7. 13 seconds. I can't take on a7. Get a king in over here. I can protect that guy. Please let me take this. I'm not getting mated, I hope. Seven seconds to finish me off. Rook h4, wouldn't I just... I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Five seconds. Uh-oh. Okay, that was check. Okay, let's go for this one. Uh-oh. What has he done to me? Check. <laughs> he just lost on time. Yes. <laughs> oh, he outplayed me with his H pawn. <laughs> Two five zero four though. Sometimes the result is fun. I'm sorry. Sometimes the result is fun. But who is this guy? Two five zero four. Greetings from Hungary. Zoltan Medvegi. Whoa, 
the GM's results today have been good. <laughs> the others haven't. So a draw and a win against GM, but it's just time pressure. But I had a good position there for some time. I put the time pressure on a bit. <laughs> 2504 GM. So I thought he was a bit under pressure here. Getting the king in. His H pawn. Look at his use of pawns in this five minute game to get his H pawn. What happened here? He plays G5. It seems with the intention of encouraging F4 to get a two to one. He's preparing for a two to one majority. And I've just fallen into a positional trap to play F4. He's just going to take and then play G4, two to one pawn majority with a, with a light square bishop hitting the destination square. Opposite colour bishop and pawn inning. I've got no real entry points here. The e5, the bishop's kind of stuck, and I've got no entry points. So I was trying to create an entry point. G5 is very powerful because it's tempting to try and open that g file. Two to one now, and I'm in a serious difficulty. But I've got the e file. He gave me the e file to get behind the pawn, and he's like nearly winning with the pawn straight off the bat. I didn't that to stop him getting g3. Then, unfortunately, what occurred here? Rook takes g3, exchange hack to force h2 in with bishop h3. What can I do about h2 and bishop h3? Maybe that was that was holding the pawn. Otherwise, now bishop a6, rook a6, h2, rook h1. Rook a1. I could have just taken the pawn here, and these pawns would be just easily winning. Just rook takes a7 here, surely. No, h2 is queening. So the way to do it is just to sack the rook immediately, and then to play b5. Then if b6, a7, just easily winning. If it takes there, then b takes winning. So if I just sack the rook here, there's no problem. But no, I've created a problem here, which doesn't need to exist. Oh well, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.